In this video we will deal with properties of different types of bonds. <coughs> A little disclaimer here, this is not showing you what the difference is between these kinds of bonds. That will come at a later time. Um, for now we're just going to see, or actually maybe it came at an earlier time. I don't know when I'm going to show these. Never just You just never know what I'm going to do next. We'll start out with ionic compounds. Um, some properties of ionic compounds. They have a crystalline structure. Now that is very basic to the idea of an ionic compound, but you probably don't know what crystalline means. It means that it's a large repetitive structure. And you probably don't really know what that means, so let me show you. Here we go. This is an example of an ionic crystal. You'll notice that you have alternating ions, if you remember from the previous chapter, um, which would tend, if you have ionic compounds, you have positive things with negative things. Uh, alternating in a pattern. And in here, the, uh, if you remember the large versus small, if you were just going to guess which one was positive and which one was negative, you would guess that... we'll pause here. Oh, yep, that's right. The smaller blue ones are the ones, you know, they're smaller. Why? Well, because they probably lost an electron and therefore they are positive. So these are our positive guys and these are our negative guys. This is actually uh, sodium chloride. This is <coughs> what you would think of. Uh, you would probably call it salt. This is, uh, um, in fact, any ionic compound is technically salt. However, this is sodium chloride. This is what you call salt, what we call table salt, um, and all that. So, uh, what, what do we mean by repeating structure? Well, think about this if I had if I took this block and made another block and set it next to it and on top and to the right and in front and back I could just keep duplicating this over and over and over similarly I could cut it into quarters and or eighths and and make it smaller and it's still the same basic pattern and you can uh, it's kind of arbitrary meaning it didn't matter how big we happened to make this they happen to make this like a four by four, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four by four, and uh, one, two, three, four tall. And, but they could have made it larger, they could have made it smaller, it would have been exactly the same pattern. And so, this is what we mean. So, whenever you think of an ionic, you need to have this picture in mind. Um, you would call the formula for this NaCl, Ooh, let's see, N-A-C-L. You would say, well, this is N-A-C-L, sodium chloride. The formula for that is N-A-C-L. And you'd be right, but if you look at it, that's not just one N-A and one C-L. That is, uh, it's like a whole bunch of N-A's and C-L's. So why do they say there's just one? Well, because um, how many there are doesn't really matter. It's huge and repeating over and over and uh, what really matters is the ratio. There's a one-to-one. -one. There's one blue for every green. And you've noticed that there's a pattern. Each of these greens is, <coughs> you might say that it's right between four blues, but that's not even true. It's between six. Let's sneak, sneak inside here. You see there's a little blue inside there that, that is touching it as well. Uh, and there would be another one out here, except they've kind of, uh, they've sliced it off here. So if we could go inside here to one of these inner if we were looking at this guy right here, well, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, everything gets in our way. But uh, that guy on the inside, he has he has uh, four around him. He's got this one here, this one here. He's got one uh, down here that's touching him, and one down on the other side, down here that's touching him. Uh, and then he has this one on top, and he has the one on bottom. Now it's kind of hard to see that, but, but each of those is touching six of the oppositely charged. So they're snug in there, right there, uh, and for each kind. So that's what a crystalline pattern is. It's a repeating, uh, alternating structure where everything is just in a certain place where they're completely uh, touching all of the different uh, oppositely charged ions that they can. And so that's what we mean by a crystalline structure. Um, because of this, they have a high melting point. <coughs> they tend to be solids. They're hard to melt. Well, what do we mean by that? If we go back here and look at this, this is a solid. It's not a liquid. It's not a gas. Um, it's a solid. Uh, because in order to 
take it out of the solid, in order to melt this, what would have to happen is we would have to take all of these things and we would have to um, get them to come out of this arrangement. They would have to kind of uh, start moving around freely amongst each other and they don't want to do that. They like to be right where they are. And so it's very difficult to melt this. It takes uh, very high temperatures to do that. And so uh, has a high melting point because it's kind of it's stable the way it is. <coughs> it's made out of ions. Each of those parts are ions. It's brittle. Uh, it's not malleable. If I try to move this, if I uh, if I try to like hit this thing, uh, these things aren't going to just move. This green isn't just going to move somewhere else if I hit it, and the blue is not just going to move somewhere else if I hit it. They're actually going to break this whole thing in two. It's going to cleave it off uh, along those edges. They don't want to be deformed because they're very particular about the way that they're arranged. So they're brittle. And if you dissolve them, uh, they uh, conduct an electric current. Well, let's talk about that. So let's look and see what this looks like when it's dissolved. First, let's show you a little video of what it means when things get dissolved. So here's a uh, here's a uh, picture of the little video. Here we have a crystalline structure, a salt, if you will. And here's the water molecules. If we dissolve this in water, see these little water molecules? They're kind of carrying off that negatively charged chloride ion. And now these are carrying off the little green one. And then more will come in, and more will come in, and they'll just kind of pull them off. That's what it means to dissolve. When you dissolve something in water, that's what's happening. And so uh, there goes another one there. And this continues, this process continues until... Uh, none of the crystalline solid is left. Instead, what you have are all these ions, these charged ions suspended in water. And that's what we uh, call an aqueous solution. A-Q-U... Uh, let's see, it's hard to do it without looking. A-Q-U-E-O-U-S. <coughs> is that right? Yes. A-Q-U-E-O-U-S. Aqueous solution. And so... Uh, we can form an aqueous solution, and if we wait until it's all done, that's going to look something like this. So here we have a situation where we've taken that ionic crystal, and we've allowed it to be, to be dissolved into uh, a solution. So now we have all of these charged particles in solution. All the little uh, little red and white ball and, uh, wire mesh m models there are... Uh, or water molecules, and all, see all the ions are separated. And so now they are free to move around. They can go zig and zag and move around, and, and since they're charged, that's what uh, an electric current is. It's a flow of charge. Um, and so since ions and charges are free to flow, we would say that this would conduct electricity. Whereas before, when it was uh, a solid, they're not free to flow, and so that would not conduct electricity. Finally, one last little word about uh, ionic compounds. The smallest unit of an ionic compound is called a formula unit. So the formula unit of salt is NaCl. <coughs> um, we do not use the word molecule uh, as regards ionic compounds. So what about covalent compounds? Covalent compounds also, uh, by the way, also referred to as molecular compounds, are uh, generally small units, not these huge repeated units like we saw a minute ago. So let's look. Here's, a, here's an example of a molecular compound or a covalent compound. These are covalent bonds. You can see that we don't have a very complex large repeating unit. You just kind of got one little simple guy and if you have a if you want a bunch of them uh, then you're still not going to get a big pattern. You're still going to see you know there's a bunch of them and they're just all separated out and we can hit play and they can run around and that's what they do. Uh, they tend to not stick together in large clumps as ionics do. Um, you can get them to but you have to really cool it off. You can see at 78 degrees below freezing we can get these things to line up into a solid but it's kinda hard to keep them there and it's gotta be really cold. And so that is uh, so, so they're small units, they're molecules, uh, they're not these big complicated repeating patterns. I can click at a lot of these different things and I can show you, here's an example of HCN, that's a uh, hydrocyanic acid. <coughs> Is You can see a lot of little parts just kind of uh, um, floating around. Now here's, here's an example of 
uh, of a different one. Here's uh, tetrachloromethane, CCL4, is another one you can look at. And here's, here's a bunch of them. You can see that it's not one big pattern. It's a bunch of small independent things uh, vibrating around, moving around in there. And so that is uh, what we mean by small units. We call those molecules. They have low melting points which means they tend to be liquid or gas because they don't really want to stick together in large units like the solid ionic compounds do. Also, they do not tend to conduct when they're dissolved, and the reason for that is pretty simple. They're not charged. This uh, this unit, the smallest unit, is not an ion. It's a it's a neutral atom. So if you if we look, um, for example, at this uh, CF4 molecule, um, <coughs> and, and this will make this only makes sense if you understand how they bond, uh, but there are no ions here. These are all neutral atoms that have stuck together, and if they come apart, uh, or you know, if you take this and dissolve it in water, there's no charge there to flow, and so it won't conduct electricity very well. Um, finally, they uh, they can be. We do call them molecules. I left that out here. Let's see. Woo. Uh, smallest unit is called a molecule. That's kind of important. Not a formula unit. Uh, and false, also they can be polar or nonpolar, uh, as we will either discuss later or already discuss, depending on when I uh, did this. So those are the different properties of uh, molecules and formula units of ionic and covalent bonds.